I had never been to East Africa before, or anywhere in Africa for that matter. My journey began in New York City in JFK Airport. From there, I went to Frankfurt, Joburg, Nairobi, and then Entebbe, a city on the edge of Lake Victoria in Uganda. Yes, Uganda. The home of child soldiers, Idi Amin, blood diamonds. I stepped off the plane in the dead of night. My taxi drove me past lean-to shacks with tin roofs, crowds gathered around fires tended in empty trash cans. Above me, I was certain there were stars of the southern hemisphere, but down here, in this cab, it was dark. Driving through the pitch-black streets, I had a moment when I thought, no one else knows where I am. I could disappear from this location and be lost forever. I tried to quiet my thoughts. I was on an adventure. After an undetermined length of time, I arrived at my sister's home in Kampala. She shared a flat with four Danes in a place best described as indoor camping. When I arrived, I brushed the ants from the counter, made some tea, then climbed onto a thin pallet of the wooden bed, lowered the mosquito net, and fell asleep. Over the next few weeks, I did my best to experience Africa each day. I walked on foot wherever I went. I ate in local cafes. I stayed in tents and watched for herds of elephants and swarms of mongooses. I interviewed women in border refugee camps. I listened to their stories of unspeakable atrocities. I wanted to understand. I came to enjoy the politeness of stopping in the road whenever you met a new face. And how are you, Madame Mazungu? Mazungu is Bantu for white skin. I am very fine, I would answer. Thank you, and how are you? Ah, very fine, very fine. And how do you find Uganda? They would ask. Mm, I find it fine, thank you, I would reply. <laughs> One night, my sister convinced me to visit a local bar near her house where expats and workers from Kampala gathered. We hired a car since you didn't walk on the streets at night unless you wanted to risk life or limb, or at very least your wallet. At the bar, we sipped our G&Ts in a nod to the old empire. The DJ played East African music sprinkled with American favorites. At one point, the YMCA came on, and let me tell you, you haven't lived until you've seen a room full of Ugandans dancing zealously to the village people. At the end of the night, the bar moved to close, and we couldn't find a cab. Embracing the new culture, I hopped on a boda boda, a kind of motorbike taxi, hugged the Uganda in front of me, and together we sped away back to camp. When I climbed off the bike, I felt a searing pain. I couldn't see what had happened. Any street lamps that did exist were usually broken by local, local gangs. I hobbled into my sister's room and looked down. On my right calf, I had a third-degree burn. If I had been in the U.S., I would have immediately gone to the hospital. But this was Uganda. What were you supposed to do? My sister said everywhere would be closed, so we'd have to wait until morning. The next morning, I limped to the nearby doctors. A nurse took one look at me. Madame Bazungu, you have Boda Boda burn. Ha! Huh. She nursed the wound, handed me a jar of golden liquid, and told me to change the bandage every few days. With my compromised immune system, I hardly thought this would solve the problem, but I decided to humor her. I was leaving to go back to the States soon with a brief stopover in London. If I needed to, I could always see a real doctor then. in London, I was immediately seen by one of the on-call doctors at our hotel. At last, I thought, a proper doctor. He gently pulled away the bandages as I prepared for the worst. I showed him the container the nurse had given me. He took it from my hands, smelled it, tasted it. Is this honey? 
he said. I prepared for the worst. The wound, he said, was healing beautifully. Far better than any cream or medicine he, my London doctor, might have prescribed. I was shocked. Since that initial visit, I've been back to East Africa, and now I'm preparing to explore West Africa. I look with different eyes now than I did on that first visit to the continent. When I return, I can't wait to be welcomed by warm hospitality, infectious laughter, open storytelling, and of course, holistic medicine. Funny how perceptions change. Over time, the wound on my leg did heal. I only have the faintest trace of a scar. I don't mind that it's not faded completely, though. For me, it's a reminder. Oh, and in case you're wondering, when I do go back to Africa, I never return to the States without a big jar of honey in my suitcase. You just can't find it here. <laughs>